everybody. I'm doing a session for a client. I'm going to be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing at a distance. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. Stick around. This is going to be some amazing energy healing for a client that you can also receive um, healing for yourself just simply by participating in the session too. So I want to thank you, the client, so much for the opportunity. I guarantee what you have going on is going to make a difference in other people's lives too. So the focus is really on some unusual aches. Um, some concerns about your physical body health and you just want me to take a look and see what I see about it see what we can do to dissolve and heal transmute learn some things from this okay I'm gonna read your goals out loud you say hi Abby I'd love to get to know what my body is trying to tell me the bones in my left toes hurt also the joints in my right arm fingers wrist, elbow, shoulder. It's subtle to a degree, but I notice. I'm also developing concerns about my heart. I sometimes feel out of breath for no reason, like my heart is racing for no reason and I feel short of breath. No pain, just suddenly it happens for no explainable reason. I love to see what you see in this and if you could tell my body that I do love and care about it. Maybe I haven't been caring over the years, but something is waking up and I want to be more conscientious of the health of my physical body. Also, can you dissolve any bad cholesterol buildup in my arteries? I don't have any known health issues. Maybe I'm paranoid, but I'd love to remove cholesterol from my arteries, heal my heart and joints. Thank you so much. Please share with others. Okay. Very specific, huh? So, left toes, left toes, okay. Joints in the right arm. So, fingers, wrist, elbow, okay, shoulder. All right, so I'm just collecting all of this here. Okay, your heart, and you feel short of breath for no reason, like your heart is racing. You don't know what's really causing it something you're noticing and then any kind of bad cholesterol buildup in the arteries and simply letting your body know that you do care I mean I, I think you being you're saying maybe I'm paranoid but I think you paying attention is there's value to that right and maybe paying attention is causing you to have some concerns and then that's causing you then to want to care more about your body so it seems to me like there's a good domino effect going on here and maybe you would label it as paranoid because maybe it's unreasonable fear but to me it sounds like some intelligence behind the scenes of it so i think it's okay to care about your body and pay attention even to subtle things and have some concerns and want to heal okay heal your body and have a better relationship with your body so i feel like you're on the right track okay <laughs> okay and relax now let's see what's going on let's see what we can do here for you okay Everything feels very slow, like uh, lava, as it slows down and cools, is still moving like a liquid, but it's becoming like a rock, you know? It's just everything is moving so slowly in here. I just keep thinking about lava that is becoming, it's moving slower and it is turning into a stone. 
And I think about how lava, when it's very hot, is in motion. But when lava cools, then it becomes like a stone. I feel like this first message is about your joints. There's a lot of nervousness, actually, about what your body's trying to tell you. It's almost like you don't want to know. You don't want to know what it's trying to tell you. I feel nervousness about it. Because when I say, well, let's just look at this arm of yours. And I feel that that is causing you to become short of breath, actually. Because when we start to look at the arm, your heart starts to race and you start to become short of breath. We're, it's not about the toes right now so much as the arm and then the heart, okay? You, okay, there's an underlying self-inflicted anger, okay? So you're angry at yourself, not at the world. But it's circulating back to you. You're angry about things that you can't fix. Okay, so I say, give me an example. Because I, I keep thinking about a birdhouse and something happens to it, it's damaged, like the wood pieces are damaged and you're gonna have to replace them with new wood pieces. So maybe you're gonna have to, to find that perfect wood and measure out the lengths and then cut it to fit and then get some nails and hammer it. And um, so you could fix something with some time and a little elbow grease, let's say, um, something like a, a birdhouse, all right? That's a physical thing that we could fix, but what about um, relationships? Maybe relationships are more complicated than maybe fixing a birdhouse. To me, I would probably let go of the birdhouse and replace it with something new, because that's like a lot of steps for my brain and that's just not up my alley. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a feel for what is it that you can't fix, okay? <laughs> what does it feel like to you? What does it look like to you? Okay, it's a bit of just ag aggressive self-talk. I see a Terminator-type world, a desolate apocalyptic world where the human race is in piles of dead bodies where the machines have taken over. I see a man who's a half-human, half-robot, like he has this um, super arm, okay? And it actually glows with blue light. It's really cool looking, and I don't know what kind of metal is use to make it but it, it's uh not your genuine arm it's it's a different it's a replaced with a super arm okay it feels like this arm protects you this arm um, has it shoots lasers <laughs> this arm has a shield as well as shoots lasers it, it's a weapon um so the arm protects you but then you say but protect me from what my inevitable death because then I see this man is up against um, a broken city piles of human bodies blood saturated ground and the machines it's like you'll be running against time literally like a Terminator um, movie like you will be up against time as well and even trying to change the past in order to change the future like you are up against time and it's an inevitable end. Like the story um, ends with the end of my life. Like you're the last man standing. So now you're going to have to decide um, if maybe this is, I guess, the end of humanity dies with you. And if you can live with that. Literally, that's the scene. You can't fix this. <laughs> And I feel like, hmm, is that right? Is that, that's like pretty intense. I mean, that's pretty big, you know? Let's just see what you say about this. Okay, that is genuine. Something about you ha having a different arm, okay? And I keep feeling like this right arm is, carries a shield. This right arm um, carries a sword. This right arm carries my my um, technologically advanced arm that protects me okay so i actually feel this is more of a weapon 
then it is um, kind of down to earth and I'm using it to garden with, you know, or cook some food. It's literally about war and protection. I keep seeing um, the arm being replaced. I even see a woman and just hear me out. She looks like Alice in Wonderland, but she looks like an older version and she looks a bit rough around the edges. She has like big bulgy blonde hair, like way too much hairspray. She has a black eye. She's wearing a cute little blue dress with a white apron. Um, she can't stand right on these high heel shoes, which are baby blue, which match her baby blue dress. Um, she looks very rough. She even has a scar, like a scratch up on her upper lip, like she's been beat up. And then I see that she has a blowtorch and she's um, doing some work here with where this, there's no arm there, okay? And she, I don't know if she's doing some engineering work to attach <laughs> your bionic arm <laughs> so it's a very it's a very disturbing gross um, room that you're in it's very small it seems like it's full of parts and pieces and we're melding human with machine and this nurse is um kind of kind of creepy you know like why does she have to look like that why is she why does she look like that She, she's a part of who you are, actually. Cause she, she smokes a cigarette, too. She, she's she got, like, a blowtorch in one hand. I, I see uh, pictures of uh, sexy women on hot rod vehicles. I see um, a garage full of tools and women with jackhammers and bikinis, okay, with, like, really, like, oiled down skin in the sun <laughs> i see this okay and, I, and then i when i look at her i see these other images and she's smoking a cigarette with this blowtorch and there's going to be pain involved but this pain is going to be worth it it's like you are the automobile that needs to get um, your mods, you get to get modified, you know, modify this automobile from something basic to something like freaking out of this world as she's smoking, right, with this blowtorch. It's like she was once really sexy until life did her in, but she still represents this like badass woman, okay? She's like this older, hot, haughty badass woman <laughs> anyway so this is the scene all right you you have this alternative nature it's about um i guess being tough i guess you could say having to be a protector having to be stronger but also something sexy about it like um being a badass is a sexy thing and you've got to be a, a badass like you've got to get uh, you've got to step up you got to be tougher than we know like you gotta be the strongest one of them all the toughest one of them all and even this woman who's working on your arm, she represents a very strong woman. She represents genuinely a very tough, strong woman who's been beaten down by life and still standing in her high heels. Look at her face. I mean, she's still trying to, to hold some kind of caliber of, a, of sex appeal. Even in her little mini dress and her... Um, She's still, there's still a sex appeal about her. Even, I, I'm just like trying to weigh this blowtorch like, man, that's kind of heavy. Like, you're going to have to be strong to hold that thing steady. It's like, so she represents being strong too, like very strong woman. Just even to do this work takes physical strength, not just a strength of heart. 
So your relationship with your arm and your heart is, um, it takes strength of heart and it takes strength of arm, strength of body and strength of heart. And so this, what we're unraveling here, the meaning of this still. I just keep feeling like your heart loses breath, almost like you can't uphold this facade. Is there, what is, if we were to bring this into the real world, out of the sci-fi scene, out of the, I don't know, 80s garage um, fantasy or something, and, and slash sci-fi bionic bodies and stuff. Like, if we take it out of there and then we just bring it to the real world, what does this look like? Take it out of Terminator, you know? Bring it to, like, today. I see somebody... The word that comes to me is who is crippled and useless. Just hear me out, okay? That's pretty harsh, but just hear me out. Because you lack purpose. You, you lack purpose. You don't get the bionic arm and the strength of... Like, you, there's nothing asking you to be so bold as to be the last man standing. There's nothing asking of the male or the female to, to conquer the extremes and to still stand on our high heels or still stand amongst the piles of dead human beings, amongst the machines that are taking over the world. And the end is with us. Like, the end is when I die. We all perish. And you, you see the responsibility involved here. The responsibility in you. The world is depending upon you. And now in this genuine reality the world doesn't depend on you at all like you just like a crippled i don't know why i just it comes to me as crippled and useless you start to weep now you cry a lot and you wave your hand and this woman disappears and i see a broken man in a chair and he is broken, I'm telling you. His skin is burnt in place. He has holes in his flesh that are oozing blood. He's bruised beyond um, repair of bruise. Like, he's just so beat up. And he does have these um, machine parts to his body. And in his brain, too, he has machine parts in his brain. He, I don't know, he still feels like a human being, but he's an upgraded or modified human. And he just cries and he says, what am I fighting for anymore? He just, he weeps in this, this chair. He says, what is real and what is not real anymore? I don't feel your heart is without breath now, just so you know. It feels a lot, um, feels more solid to me and it's, I see an apple that hangs from the tree and it worries about falling. It worries about the brittleness of its stem. But God is saying, do not worry about the brittleness of your stem. You were always strong. God says that. And you, this apple on this tree, will not fall. But you worry about fall because fall then is failure. But I'm supposed to look at this useless cripple and what the scene looks like is very, it's hardly visible, just so you know, but it's more full of white light. And I barely can see a, a sidewalk. I see um, all kinds of trash and garbage along the sidewalk. I see a person whose bones are so brittle they must sit in a wheelchair, but they don't even have a wheelchair. And I see them trying to get from one place to the other, but they, they can't crawl really because even to put weight on their knees will break their very bones. And I see nobody here to help. I see nobody around, really. It's just you alone in this big city, and there's nobody here, and you're just a useless cripple. I keep, it's like it wants to beat you down. Like, it wants to break your ego. Like, it just, it's like somebody wants to stand here and laugh in your face while you're a useless cripple, which is the one thing that you are afraid of. It takes your breath away. 
You're the apple that worries about the brittleness of its stem and the fall to the ground. You avoid this. Because once you fall to the ground, you are useless and cripple. I say, why not fall to the ground and become useless and cripple? Like, maybe that's a better story for you. I mean, I think we need to explore that. But God says no. Actually, I am supposed... Mm. <laughs> I'm like, mm. God, I think, I think we should still explore this. I mean, I think we should still explore this in some disconnected safe room just to see what it looks like. But God keeps showing me the stem is strong. The stem is strong. The stem is strong. And really wanting you to know that the stem is strong. And that you, this strong apple, remains in the tree. Because you represent something. You, you somehow represent something. Because I am standing now on the ground looking at like, this beholding. Um, behold the apple that remains attached to the tree forever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually quite... Um, it's magical. It's special. It's, um, it's a gift, really. You're afraid of not being that gift. That's why I, I feel like we need to explore you not being that gift because then you can appreciate and just try, like, I can't, I, all right, this is how I'm analyzing it because when I talk to God about this, I feel that it's very hard. You value what God is saying. You value the image. You are choosing to believe in and embrace this image. But I feel there's a bit of a lack in the strength of you embracing the image because the fear is still a bit present. And I think we need to fall into the fear in order and resolve the fear from the level of the fear in order to strengthen the gift of being the strong apple in the tree. I'm waiting, actually. I'm like, that's what I think, God. That's, that's what is coming to me. That's how it feels inside of me. It's almost like I've got to believe in myself sometimes. I, I feel like maybe that's also part of your message is to, to believe in yourself too here, okay? Let, let's let's that's coming from somewhere let let's say let's not just follow everything that we're told like let's let's follow what what we feel like we need inside let, let's mm, okay all right let me pause and let me listen i've had my argument i had my say but let me hear the sound of what has changed I'm returning to the scene where you're this broken body in the chair. There's nobody here but you. And you're in a place of preservation, actually. That's what it's called. It's underground. It's beneath the surface. There are no machines will find you here. And you're in a place of preservation and rest. And I see that this dental chair is actually the closest thing to a soft bed that you've had in a long time. Which then makes me sad. Still, the energy says no to you falling from the tree. So I stand and I look at you as just a regular old person. I just look at you as me and ask you if you see me. I don't know what, what, but I just uh, take my hand and there's no visible knife here, but I pull a big knife out of your heart and you start to cry and there's a big kind of slice, okay, where the knife was in there. It's just like an open slit there, okay? And you don't know whether you want the knife removed or you want the knife to remain. I say, well, that's... Can you, exp I mean, that's very interesting. Uh, why would you want the knife to remain? He says, because the pain makes me stronger. If the knife is removed, then I will be weak. Oh. Okay. Hmm. And I say, well, I could 
put it back and then stab it in a little deeper. Would you like that? You want me to cut off some body parts for you? Let me see how strong you can be. Something is making sense now. That there has to be a balance with strength. As in, pain does make you stronger, but you also have to be realistic on how we work with it, with pain and um, no pain. It's, it's like, how, how, do, how do we balance the pain with the strength? I guess is the best way to put it. Because you're realizing that what I'm saying is true. How much pain becomes ridiculous. How much pain do you hold on to to make you stronger? And it actually becomes kind of ridiculous. Something is happening here. Because the whole sense of this place being um, about preservation and rest, it's after this conversation about the knife and the heart, everything is starting to look kind of hellish, okay? Like, um, even the sensation of where we are is kind of like a safe place, is becoming um, demonic, okay? Becoming a place of, it's like a demonic playground place. And I start to transform into a, a basically a demonic being. And I represent um, something you're up against, okay? When it comes to learning about the balance of pain. Pain and resurrection? Pain resurrecting through pain becoming strong? Balance between pain and strength? I have a pretty gross looking thing, actually. I don't really have any skin. I'm just sort of like muscle fibers, but it's all black and um, I don't know how to explain it. It kind of looks like thick roots around me, but like I'm made out of roots, but I'm squishy, but I'm tough and I'm not very nice either because I represent the dish or out of pain. Basically, I, I will have fun watching you suffer, thinking you're becoming stronger. What point in time do you stop? Now everything's disappearing and I'm back to just asking the question, did you want me to put this knife back in? Are you ready to let it go? And you start to cry again. You say this is the hardest thing for me to say, but please, it's time to set it down. It, there's suddenly a metal tray. Oh man, this is one weird place. There's a person here. <laughs> suddenly with a metal tray and a bunch of other scary tools on it and they don't look human at all and this is actually back to the safe energy they are a very pale purple and they are look like kind of like a tree actually the demon was kind of reminded me of made out of roots and this um, person reminds me of um, actual sawed off pieces of a tree like um, the top and the bottom. So you have the, it's like tree trunk, okay? But it's like made out of tree trunk pieces. Like their arm is like an elephant's foot, you know? Like they're just, and they have um, the circles that represent time. How whole old is this tree? But they're squishy too. And they're a light purple color. And they, their arms and legs are, they don't have any fingers or anything. And I, I'm like, where do you come from? I was like, yes, it's time to put the knife down. I agree. Oh, knife and the tray and the thing that's standing here. Weird. Very weird. I say, are you sure? It has a... There's something special about the handle. Maybe it's uh, like an ivory tusk or what... It's like it seems to be made out of like a white uh, material that... It represents something precious, okay? And this odd thing that holds the tray of torture tools. You look healthier, actually. I have set it on the tray. And there's a question if it is gone for good or if it will return. I ask God. 
And God shows me that you, you've been through enough crippling already. And the fear is that the crippling will remain for you. Therefore, for us to explore the fear is not quite what we think the fear is. What you need is for the crippling to disappear so that you can be tuned into the strength of your stem, okay? Connected to the apple to the tree, okay? That is why it wasn't necessary to go there. It's like, thanks God, because vibrationally we needed to do something, but that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and it's like, it is always good to question. But give yourself some time to find out why why the why God takes God's stance. Hmm. Interesting. I don't why are you still here? I like look at it, it's like why are you still here? You're you're weird. <laughs> it's like it's, I can't. I I'm trying to look at you and see how you're actually looking so much better, but this thing is still here. I need to look at this thing. I need to really analyze it. It's it's strange. It's it reminds me of elephant like feet. You know, like its arms and legs are like elephant, but has no like nail toenails or whatever. It's just. And it's squishy and a light purple color. I can't understand its face. And it represents female. Again, a nurse in service, okay? It represents a nurse and it represents being in service of others. It also represents kind of like a background character that we take notice of. I don't, th there's some, I, I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to follow the behavior, but I take the tray and I, I toss it through the wall and I angrily look at this and I, I say, what are you doing here? Really aggressively. And one thing that this being, um, it lacks the ability to speak up and to value the importance of themselves. And is there something aggressive coming through me? So aggressive, like I, I'm taking this thing by the nurse outfit and I'm pulling it. And it has more of a face than we know. But it, re it it's almost like it wants to behave as a statue. It wants to behave as a, in service behind the scenes. Nobody needs to see me. I just take the items, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, it, there's an aggressive, God needs to tell you to stop playing pretend like playing behind the scenes stop doing this stop it like really loudly because this um, represents part of your yourself and it needs to be returned to yourself so you can rehabilitate and you can become even that much stronger through healing through healing okay so i take this is a strange being, okay, but it's squishy. I'm molding it into a spirit energy. And I place the spirit energy into your heart where that opening is mending. And I put it right on in there. <gasps> <coughs> Holy crap. No wonder you feel lo lack of breath. This thing is part of that. Now that breath is in here. <sighs> I don't even know what to say right now. You look rehabilitated. You're not fully healed by any means. I can see how broken of a person that you actually had become here. It's quite clear now that there were no wars you could have ever fought at this point. I mean, you were definitely the wounded soldier if I ever did see one still trying to fight this war on terror I guess <laughs> the robot war you need time to mend and heal because for you to adapt to the next level of strength of who you are you need time to mend and heal my god do you ever need time that that being that I placed into your heart is a very beautiful female energy and she represents breath and 
she represents um, again a nurse and being in service she represents genuine love it, it, like actually across time and space to be in service of others she represents that I don't know why to be so aggressive with her but there's something that she needs to work on too and she needs to work on being in service in the right ways there's something she's avoiding she is also you by the way there's something majorly that she's avoiding in of her role of being in service um, she's not doing there's something major that she's not doing but by putting her back into your heart this strong male representation of yourself who's been broken um, is finally able to breathe and the heart feels stronger you're actually able to believe God that you are a strong apple in the tree and that you must that your stem is not brittle by any means you're not falling to the ground anytime soon it's almost like you you have seen that fall to the ground one too many times actually and it's it's 10,000 times louder than just me saying that you just apple falls to the ground it's like you this final remaining human against the freaking apocalypse or something and you stand broken with all these replacement parts to help you keep standing because your body isn't strong enough but really you just need the time to heal it I don't I, I feel like you having the bionic arm energetically it's still there and it feels like it's your real arm it feels like it's more your real arm than your human arm because I, I say why don't we let go of all these mechanical pieces and let you um, grow back into your body again and God says um, we adapt to what we have but that doesn't mean that what we have or what we are is is it, it's, it's like take take out the machine parts and let you grow and adapt to your natural body again that's it's it's what God's trying to say is that sometimes we adapt to the changes and the changes become us um, but the changes never really were us so to let go of these <clears throat> changes that created the impression of strength to let these go and then return to the original strong body that you were born with and there's some metaphor to this it's not just about your physical body it's about um, the mental strength too but it's also um, potentially maybe adopting some habits or behaviors in order to survive um, maybe the apocalyptic experiences that you've been through in your life um, you've adapted some new behaviors and so to be as you remember yourself to be perhaps what is truly who you are is let's say your innocence I mean let's throw that in there as an idea let's explore that let's I really like that weirdo like was this I really like her in your heart like she's flourishing in there okay and there's no weird um, torture tools in here there's no blow torches there's not a like an old girl like sci-fi garage or something like we're in a small enclosed space in like a dental type chair and you look like you're repairing and we're removing all the the technological pieces like even from your brain like all over you okay and then we're regrowing your original form it feels like home actually it feels like home is what you say and you think about what you told me you know about the knife that you need to keep it there because the pain makes you stronger and you're thinking about how you feel now that you've healed so much here and you feel whole you feel whole and you feel naturally who you are but you're not sure if you could I guess the coarseness of how you became is going away you don't know how to to grow that back into its innocence so to speak 
uh, we've already ascended out of the scene. Like, we don't need the dental chair in this weird world. We need a garden. We need to be in a garden space. You need to be by a beach or an ocean. Like, you need to mountains. You need some kind of beautiful natural scenery that's very captivating for the soul. Like, you need that. You need the fresh air. Maybe it's just an old forest. It's trees. So something about you and trees. I feel like trees is correct. I feel like an old forest of trees, actually, because it seems the trees are communicating with you. Like you feel a connection with, with trees communicating with you. That makes you feel emotional as well. And you ask God, kind of the who am I question. It's not really spoken in words, it's just really expressed through the heart. And am I okay? As I am? It's like, who am I? I am this. Am I okay? As I am. Still feeling a bit coarse. It's like the memory of time still exists in your mind. And we can't remove that as like a bionic attachment or something and grow it back as it naturally originally was. And I say, what if memories are an attachment too? Like, what if, what if we truly can let them go? Like we let go of that knife. Like, if you could let go of a memory, as in not erase it, you just hand it to God and then just let an innocence um, grow there. What, what would it be? And just try. Let's just see what happens. Nothing is spoken, but I hear the trees. You're kind of in a ring of old trees and they're singing. But their singing is not like um, high pitched. It's actually kind of vibrational, different tones of masculine voices and vibrational. And they are creating a, a sound and you are in the ring of these trees. And it's just for your heart. It's to mend your heart. And it's Mother Earth, Mother Earth also, because you, you're now laying down in the grass in between these ring of old trees. They sing and you're lying down and I feel Mother Earth energy is, is impacting you from below and around and above through the trees and the grass and the earth. And it's very healing for the front and back side of your heart as a chakra, but as a physical aspect of you. I feel that that's the end of the session here, but I feel that I feel we could definitely go deeper. I don't know that I, I don't feel like we were able to explore your toes. That might be a whole separate thing. Um, but it seems like the arm and your heart are connected and there's genuinely an energy thing going on with it. Um, so when we clear energy things, we actually heal physical things. So, I do, do feel like there's a deeper door though. I feel like there's a lot more to the meaning of all of this. And as we dive deeper, um, you're going to feel physically better and less, I guess you could say paranoid um, because you feel confident in your body balance and your relationship with your life, with your identity, with God, with um, guidance, with your path, all that stuff. Oh man, I could never have guessed that I never I mean that was pretty something so thank you for the inspiration thank you thank you guides thank God for your inspiration to explore this and thank you everybody for watching I hope you found um, support and healing for yourself through this client session um, I hope you all have a very amazing rest of your day